Okay. When we were looking at Mark, we were trying to find out unique things about Mark's gospel to see if Hebrews is tied to those things. We found a sort of tie to Mark 26 verses 24 through 29. And then in the last increment, I showed you how Mark wraps around Luke in a passage that's only in Mark and Luke. So that you can see that he does add things in his gospel, but it's surgical additions that he had to get directly from God to the other material that was already known and already published in the other gospels prior to his. Okay. So what we're looking for is what is unique in Mark that is referenced in Hebrews. And we're having a hard time. So then the next thought is, okay, let's go to Mark's gospel itself and find out what's unique about its style, its rhetorical style. Each gospel has its own rhetorical style it's got a basic theme and what is it okay every writer announces his theme at the beginning that's Greek drama style and that's good Greek writing style this right here highlighted in blue on the left is Mark's theme okay but I have to explain what it is because most people don't understand what this really means okay this word way was the nickname of the Christians. They were called the way, okay? Because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That was the most famous phrase for Christ amongst people of his own day. The word Christian didn't come until later. They weren't known as Christians. They were known as the way because the Lord was the way to God, okay? But the word way doesn't mean way. It means a road. And we still call it, you know, we can say, you know, the uh, what, there are lots of streets in America anyway that are called, you know, uh, American way. Of course, that means something else in English too. Um, airport way. Okay. There are a lot of words way that actually mean road on street maps. Okay. The word way means road. It's odos. See, I'm using strongs to keep it simple for you. I hate strongs because it's weak. All right. Odos. Okay. It means highway. It also ends up meaning, you know, metaphorically, trap, journey, path, paths, road of life. Okay. Or the road to God. But you have to understand what this is. This is in Isaiah 43. And here's the verse. Look in the lower left-hand corner. See? A voice is calling. Now, I have to explain what that means. In old times, when the king was about to arrive at your city for a, you know, a royal visit, it was kind of like preparing for the Olympics. The city would clean itself up. They would make new buildings. They would repaint their houses. They would do all kinds of things. But one of the biggest things they need to do, they needed to do, was to make smooth the road to the town. In other words, there'd be rocks in the road. You know, they didn't, they, they didn't have paving like we do today. So they would either cobblestone the thing, which wasn't necessary, was very expensive to do like the Romans did in, uh, you know, the road to Rome, the Appian Way was a cobblestone road, okay? But more often what they would do is they would have sentries and they would clean up, they would clean up the highway, they would have it be a, you know, like a, a, a dirt road, but it would be clean of stones, it'd be clean of trash, it would be clean of horse manure, stuff like that. And one of the big things they had to do was that, you know, any kind of dirt road is going to have bumps in it from ruts, from chariots, ruts from wagons. And so you'd have to constantly smooth it out, okay, because it would rain and then the ruts would be there 
or, or it wouldn't rain and the, the wagon was heavy. So you're constantly smoothing out the road. Okay, because you're going to have a huge entourage. A king basically traveled with his entire, you know, cabinet with him. So that meant something like, you know, 20, well, at least a thousand, upwards of maybe, you know, 10,000 people traveling with him so that their, the caravan would go on for miles. All right? This is a herald. When this is a voice, it means a herald. Get ready, the king is coming. That's really what that phrase in blue in the lower left-hand corner means. The king is coming. Get yourself ready. Get your town ready. Get all cleaned up. Make it easy for him to arrive. See, make it easy for him to come. Because if he has a bad journey, he's going to be in a foul mood when he gets here. Okay? So that's Mark's theme right here. That's how he starts it. See? I send a herald ahead of you who will prepare your way, your road. Get ready. That's Mark's theme. So now we have to say, well, why is that so important? And it is important, and I'll explain more why in a minute. This is the whole theme of his gospel. Why is that important? Because Mark is writing in the year of the four emperors. And the temple was supposed to go down three years into the tribulation, so they were expecting it immediately. i got to stress that word immediately. Because the other translation of this word is immediately. And if you look on the right-hand side, in English, I found all the words that use this word, utus. And then I just flipped it into the English translation so that you can see that. Sorry, I have to keep checking to see if the recorder is on. Okay? So what he does, and it's really confusing because the translators don't translate it the same way as they should, is that it says immediately. That's also the Greek word utus. All right? And he says it 40 times which is pregnant, okay? 42 times, actually, which is even more pregnant, because 42 is half of 84, and 84 is the decree for the 1,000 years to begin in the Hebrew syllables of Psalm 90, verses 1 through 4. I've already covered that and shown that in my Psalm 90 videos. So if you haven't seen it, then you're not going to understand what I'm saying. Okay, this, is, this occurs 42 times in his gospel, this word, utus. Okay? It's right here in the Greek. The first meaning is straight. But you can see why it means immediately because if it's straight, then you can more quickly come. See, immediately coming. All right? Straight away coming up out of the water. See, the King James is keeping you straight away. But they don't always translate it properly either. The straight away. And that has the meaning of immediate in English, too. And we get it from the King James. And that's, that's okay. You know, in some ways, it's actually better. Okay, so on the right, he repeats this word immediately, starting off most of his sentences. See? Look on the right-hand side, because I put all the uses of, of utus. Okay? So he's doing it all again. Okay, immediately. See? You're immediately on the Sabbath. Okay, just then, this is translated just then, but it's utus right here. Okay, so immediately, 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 immediately she's healed. Okay, immediately, 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 straight away, right away, next in sequence. Next in sequence. See, if something is straight, then you're going from next to next to next to next. There are no obstacles. Okay, that's the point. There's no more obstacles. Next in sequence, right away. So you see, this is a deft way of him warning them, hi, the temple, the rapture can happen right away now. Because Paul is dead. Because Paul had already forecast, and I have to wonder if he wasn't knowingly forecasting the year of his own death, in the meter of Ephesians 1, 3 through 14, which is in my GGS series, Starting in episode 11a, I start showing that in the Greek, I show the meter. Okay? And I have to keep on saying this about my own videos because nobody in Christendom knows about this. So, that I'm sorry, I have to quote myself. 
you know, maybe after I'm dead, somebody scholarly will come across this stuff, and then he'll validate it. I'm not allowed to do that. I have to just be secretary, okay? And all I can do is report on what's in scripture. I'm not teaching. Women don't teach, but they can report. They're supposed to report. Every single human being is supposed to report on what's in scripture. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, immediately. Utus. And he repeats it. He keeps repeating it. All right? Immediately, 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 immediately. And that keeps running through Mark 42 times. 41, 42 times. Well, 42 actually, but it's mapped. It's only translated immediately 41 times in the NASB. Okay? So in other words, you know, like just then, that one we just saw just then, or was it? That other verse, it says just then, just then, right here. The NASB didn't translate it immediately then, okay? All right. This word, which is obviously key to Mark's theme, straight away, right away, next, the king is coming, meaning the temple's going to go down, and it could be the rapture. King is coming for church. All right. It's only in Mark. I searched to see if it was in the book of Hebrews. The search on the right here are all the uses of utis, whether they're in Mark or or in Hebrews, it's not in the book of Hebrews at all. Tereo, which is really big verse, big keyword, meaning to keep, to hold, to cherish, is massively used in Peter and in Jude. But it's not used at all in the book of Hebrews. How come? I don't have an answer. I'm just telling you, you know, what it is. So what else is it about Mark that makes his epistle unique that we might be able to find something in the book of Hebrews that talks to it. You would think this would be there in the book of Hebrews, but this word utus isn't anywhere in the book of Hebrews. This is the other version of utus. Okay? It's not in the book of Hebrews at all. How come? And I don't know the answer to that. So now, in the next increment, we're going to have to look at, well, what else is unique about Mark's gospel? Okay, what is what is it about his style that's different from the other two gospels going before him? And we'll come to that in the next increment.